They hadn't been able to contact mom. 31-year-old Letitia Lawson. They hadn't been able to determine the welfare of these two children. Her 10-year-old daughter or 3-year-old son. What happened next? No one could have predicted. An Indiana mother is in police custody after police say she admitted to killing her child with olive oil and vinegar and stuffing his body in a closet. Police found them at a house on Wabash Avenue. We do believe that that child had been deceased for several months. During questioning, Lawson told police, quote, her son was with God. Instead of contacting EMS or obtaining medical attention for that child, she wrapped his remains in a blanket and she placed that body in a closet. Olive oil and vinegar? and stuffs his body in a tote bag for all these months. I want to go out to Elizabeth Fields, reporter, CNN affiliate, she, WANE. Have police described for you at all this tote bag, or have you seen it for yourself? I haven't, and that is part of the investigation that they're keeping very quiet and, and not really seeing many details about. Again, I, I go back to this pastor who was able to tell us and give his firsthand account um, and he said that he was in the house for several times, three or four times over the course of the weeks that she was there. And, and he didn't see anything like that and, and didn't smell anything either for that account. And that brings us oh, to Howard Oliver, gone, forensic man. pathologist joining us tonight from Los Angeles, former deputy medical examiner of Los Angeles. So many questions to ask you. But first of all, this woman went into a home that is being built to be a halfway house for the church and for men that get out of prison. The pastor went into the house at least three times recently to do work on the house, but he says he never smelt anything. At this point, would there be a smell of decomposition after a year, or is that over with? Uh, that smell of decomposition is completely gone by now. Uh, the smell of a human body is very distinctive. It's uh, very old different. I mean, it's something you wouldn't forget. If he wasn't able to smell the body when he went in the house, then it had been dead for several months and uh, probably mummified and uh, dehydrated. Mm. Doctor, I want to ask you, the cause of death released late today from autopsy just done asphyxiation due to compression of the neck. Does that correlate with you to a baby being fed olive oil and vinegar oh, obviously not. until it she couldn't breathe? idiot. Not at all. Uh, oh, if the baby geez. was, the olive oil wouldn't do anything unless it went down his lungs. He might uh, you know, suffocate on it that way. The vinegar would put him in metabolic acidosis. That's uh, uh, a pH problem. If, according to the uh, findings at autopsy, what has happened to that baby was that it was choked to death. The, the, uh, the, the larynx was probably crushed and the hyoid bone was probably broken which is how they were able to turn the cause of death. But that's by choking with the hand. Right. So her confession yesterday was not a true confession. I want to go back out to Mike Wilson, who is reporter and anchor for talk radio WOWO in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, the caller, uh, Marla in West Virginia, asked about a support system of the family. She left her family, right, voluntarily. Uh, left them at least two months ago. Yeah, she had been having apparently some familial issues there because, uh, yeah, she had reported that she, she had basically just turned her back on her family. And they reported not seeing her since September or October. And I think, you know, it, it's tough to speculate at this point on exactly, you know, what happened between the family, why the family waited several months uh, before contacting authorities and, and reporting her missing. Uh, so you really don't know about the support structure. You don't know about the mother and the father. And really all we're hearing from police is, is what's sort of, quote, known as the family. Uh, so that's, that's what we're waiting to see. We don't even know who, that, who exactly that family is. You know, is it, is it a mother and a father? Is it a sister, a brother? You know, who, who's concerned about her? Who was there for her? And I think that's still unraveling at this point. But to show McCollum, crime analyst, Pine Lake PD, joining us tonight from Georgia, I don't care who she was around, all right? Once she killed, which she admitted, her yep. little three-year-old and put it in a blanket in a closet and then a tote bag, 
you are going to smell decomposition. You are going to know anybody in that home or around her that Gee, something's wrong. It's going to be unbearable. There's also going to be bugs. I mean, the 10-year-old, what she must have lived with for at least a period of 11 days would be unimaginable. And I believe that's another reason this mother kept the 10-year-old out of school. So she wouldn't be around any mandated reporters, any counselors, anybody that could ask her what's been going on at home. This is a cover-up from the very beginning. She doesn't call EMS. She hides the child. She covers the child. She takes her child from place to place to place. It is deliberate. It is a cover-up from the get-go. I would like to know why, when the relatives last saw this mother in September or October, and the mother was with the daughter, and there was no three-year-old running around, why that family didn't do something at that time. Although it would not have brought the child back, because the child was already dead back in November of 2009. But clearly, um, the, the family could have called the cops especially because of the daughter. I mean, that daughter was is 10 years old, and she something could have happened to her. I just, I don't understand this. Very frustrating.